What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Crazy Cycling Channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing my tent, which is the Big Agnes Copper Spur HV UL2 bike pack tent, which is basically a lightweight tent for bike packing or backpacking. You can see it there behind me. I have done a first impressions video about this tent where I just built it up on camera. A lot of negative um, comments and uh, thumbs down on that video, I think, because people thought I didn't know what I was doing. I was just trying to show what it was like to build that tent right out of the box from reading the instructions. I now actually have experience with the tent. I've gone camping with it and there are some good things about the tent, some bad things about the tent. And that's what I'm gonna share with you in this video. If you don't like my criticisms of the tent, that's just my experience using it. So hopefully this will be helpful to some of you. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so I figured I'd just walk around the tent and kind of talk about the positives and negatives. There are a lot of positives to this tent, but there are some things I don't like as well. As you can see, I have the rain fly on right now, but I'm also going to take the fly off for you so you can see what it looks like just as a skeleton because it's actually pretty cool. So the first thing I want to talk about here is actually the color. So the downside is that this tent is, in my opinion, kind of an ugly tent. It's this weird light gray color. And I just don't think it's appealing as all. It's actually a lot lighter in person than it is in the photographs online. Online, it looks more like a slate gray color, but in person, it's just, it's, it's kind of like a dark off white color. And I just think it's ugly. However, there's a big advantage to that, which is that I don't think this tent is going to be too hot, especially compared to some darker color tents. Uh, Cause anyone who's ever been in a tent in the sun knows that they, that they can overheat pretty easily. You get condensation in there. And I think the color of this will help mitigate that. And also the tent without the fly is actually almost white. And again, I think that's kind of ugly and it'll probably attract dirt, but on the plus side, it'll really help keep the heat away. So I think that's a pretty good thing about this tent overall. And also there's this nifty little ventilation thing. There's a, a, a stick in there you can either have up or take down just to add some extra ventilation. I've seen that on the REI tents as well. And I think that's a pretty cool feature because condensation will tend to rise in your tent and hopefully that will help help it uh, escape. There's only one vent, two might be better to get a bit of a cross breeze, but I do think that's a pretty handy feature. Uh, so pitching this tent is actually really easy. I mean, I, I, I guess a lot of tents are. There are three poles, which I'll show you better when I take the rain fly off, but you basically stake down your tent and then the poles fit into, uh, there are these plastic clips. You probably can't see it very well, but there's a hole in the plastic and the pole just pops into that. And you put your poles, Your uh, it's actually one pole system that's all together. You put your pole system together and then you just clip the tent to the pole and then it's pitched, it's really easy. Um, there is a ground sheet you can buy from Big Agnes, but it's a weird hexagon shape and I had it, I didn't like it, it's also expensive. So I got a cheap ground sheet off eBay, which is what I use. It's a little bit on the small side, especially at this end, because this tent is not a rectangle. It's more of a trapezoid. And you can see here, the ground sheet kind of goes from, from the corner to, you know, a foot off the corner. I guess I could have centered it a bit better on this side. And on the other side, my ground sheet is actually pretty close. It's, it's pretty much the right size. Uh, it kind of goes, you know, it's, it just fits under the tent body, but that footprint I got off Amazon and it was like $15 compared to the official footprint, which is 90. And I, I did not like it when I had it because it fit underneath the rain fly, but not very well. And also I think it would just let water on top of the ground sheet, which you don't want. Um, so I just went with this other ground sheet, which is fine. So that's and not a criticism of the tent itself. And maybe there's a better way of pitching it, um, but I didn't really, particularly uh, get along with it. And I just went for this cheap option, which seems to work fine. The other thing I like about this pitching system is I really like the way the rain fly connects. So the rain fly actually clips to the tent. There's just a little plastic clip here. I guess I'm not sure about the long-term durability of these, but hopefully Big Agnes will kind of stand behind the products and give you a replacement if you need it. But it just kind of clips to the tent. So I, I really like that system as well. Um, you know, overall this rainfly is is kind of unusual and there are some good things about it. So one good thing is that, uh, well, I talked about the vent already. It also has these toggles here 
which I didn't quite understand when I was doing my first impressions video, but you actually can open up the door and roll it up and these toggles slip into little cloth loops on the bottom and that'll keep your door open. What's kind of weird about it is that it's the underside of the door that you open. So you don't open this, maybe all tents are like this, but there's a top section that folds over the zipper and this bottom section and you roll up the bottom, which is kind of weird to me because it kind of gets jammed in this corner a little bit because it's obviously underneath, but you have to roll it to the outside. So I, to me, it would make more sense to unroll or roll up this top section, but there's probably a really good reason why it's the bottom and it's not really a big deal. But I like the toggle system. It's very lightweight, very simple. Speaking of weight, this tent is extremely light for what it is, I think. I mean, I can't remember the spec, but it was significantly lighter than most of the other two-person tents I saw. So that is a major, major plus. It's an expensive tent. It's like 500 bucks, but you are paying for that lightweight, and I think it's very effective and pretty full-featured for, for that weight. But anyway, I was talking about the Rainfly doors. Uh, good that you can lock them open. Zippers are good. It's It's got a really nice big piece of this fabric here, which you know, covers the zipper. And by the way, this fabric feels fairly durable. It, it feels a little bit more durable than I had a Nemo tent before. And, uh, you know, it's that weird thin polyester type material that most tents are made of, but it, it does feel a little bit more durable just going on feel than some of the other tents I've seen. So I do like the material. I also really like the way the rainfly comes almost to the ground. It's only an inch, you know, maybe two inches off the ground over there. And I think that will really help keep the water out. A lot of tents, you know, they're much higher. They're like four or five inches off the ground. And then they have cutouts along the side, I guess to save weight, but you'll have like a big cutout here. And that might let wind through more, but to me that will just also let water through. So I appreciate the fact that you have full coverage with this rainfly. One thing I haven't quite figured out is why there are zips. Here. Oh, you know what? I know why. Maybe, so there's zips on the corners of the rainfly as well, and I couldn't figure that out, but maybe that's if you do want to open your door, you can unzip that and have it roll up completely. So that's kind of neat. I think that's not necessary. I would just unzip it on one side and just roll it as a triangle. But now it's finally making sense why there's another zipper at each corner. Um, it, you know, this doesn't add too much weight. That's still going to be pretty waterproof. And I guess that adds to your versatility. Actually, I think what you can do is I think you can unzip this thing and then use some hiking poles to have a little porch. So maybe that's what that zips about. So, you know, overall this Rainfly is actually a pretty cool design. There's not much negative to say about it. It does have these daisy chains up here. I'm not really sure what those are exactly for. If you know, you can tell me, I suppose you could like close pin some clothes to that, but I don't think that's necessary. Um, I don't really understand daisy chains much to begin with. So if you know what you're supposed to do with that, let me know. Um, yeah, oh, you also get, you do get some guy wires. So, um, you know, if it's really windy, you can stake your tent down better, but they don't give you enough stakes and I don't like the stakes that come with it. I don't have the original stakes here, but I bought these aftermarket stakes on Amazon. They're actually quite a bit longer than the originals. They're also not that much heavier, but the originals were like half this size. They had a very shallow cutout here and I think you only got eight, which is not really enough to me because you basically need 10. You need four to stake the tent, four to stake the ground sheet, and two to stake the vestibules on the rain fly. And then if you want to use your guy wires, you're going to need probably four more. So I guess that's 12, but 10 is kind of the, the minimum, but they only give you eight, um, which just seems a little bit weird to me. That's kind of a cost cutting measure and I didn't like the stakes to begin with, but not the end of the world. These aftermarket stakes were 10 bucks. Um, see if I can think of anything else about the outside while I'm thinking about it. There is one big negative to this tent. It's kind of a major one. And I know a lot of people aren't really gonna understand this, but it is actually the color coding where I really think Big Agnes has prioritized a function, form over function. Uh, and after having gone camping, I still really think that. So I'm actually gonna fold the rain fly halfway down and I'll try and explain what I'm talking about here because I'm pretty sure that a lot of uh, people just thought I was making a big fuss about nothing. 
But you know what? When you're tired at the end of the day and you want to pitch your tent, the last thing you want is it to be more difficult. You want it to be as simple as possible because you want to be able to pitch it quickly, especially when you're tired, when it's dark, when it's raining, um, and you don't want to have to think about it. So, uh, and, and this tent does make you think about it. So I'm going to fold the rain fly over and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here you can see what the tent itself looks like. And by the way, this is the best way I've found to attach the rain fly. I found that it's best to just uh, basically fold it over. And then there are these little nylon uh, things that just clip onto the... Uh, this is a separate tent pole that, you know, gives you that, that top support. I forgot to clip the top of the tent onto that pole, so I guess I can do that real quick real real real, <laughs> real quick but the whole tent uses these plastic clips it's very very simple i mean like most tents you just kind of clip this all together so the pitching is definitely pretty easy except for the color coding of of the tent especially when it comes to the rain fly so if you look here you can see that the tent is basically gray and orange everywhere and by looking at that can you tell which color goes where. So the color coding here is one side of the tent is orange or red. So you have the, the end of the pole here is kind of red. This, uh, the, the tent body itself has a red clip. That's this here. And then the rain fly is also red. And you want to match up all your red. So this is what the red side looks like. But the gray of the rain fly <laughs> doesn't really look very gray to me. Just on, I know the clip is gray, but just looking at this, when you have your rain fly in your hand, when it's off the tent, to try and figure out which side is gray and which side is red takes more brain power than I really want to put into it. You have to really figure out, okay, this, you can't just look and be like, everything is gray. This is half gray, half red in general. I know it's the zip that's red, the buckles that are gray, but you have to specifically look for the buckles. And it's just pretty confusing to figure out what's what especially since there are so many zips on the rain fly. So you have zips here at the vestibule and at the corner. So if you have the rain fly on the ground, it's hard to tell uh, to keep to tell if you're looking at that corner or that corner, especially because here you have the same colors again. It's red and gray. And on the other side of the tent, it's also red and gray. And there's no different differentiation here. So when you go to fold your rain fly over, it's very, very easy to get it backwards. And on a quick glance, it's very hard to tell which side goes where. So I, I really think that's a big negative. And I really think that's where the designers just wanted this thing to look good. And it's, it doesn't even look that good. It's not, it's not that great of a color, in my opinion. It's a, it's a functional color, I'll give it that. But I would have really liked to see some totally contrasting colors in the corners, the zips could be red, but like the poles could be like blue or something with, you know, or like, you know, primary colors. I don't know, like yellow on one side, blue on the other side and some green in there. Um, that would have made it so much more clear what goes where, but as it is on first glance, it's very hard to tell what goes where, and it's very hard to get the rain fly draped over the tent properly. I'll show you the silver side of the tent. And as you can see, even here, I know these aftermarket stakes are orange, but so are the originals. And it just, it's all kind of gray and red here. It's not that distinct what's where. You know, you got red here, you got red down there. You also have some gray. The tent itself is gray. And I just think some contrast in color. Maybe all this, again, could have been blue. You know, this section of the pole and the stakes and the um, you know piece of rope down there, as well as the corresponding parts on the rain fly. You know, if this was all blue, and maybe the zip could have stayed red if they wanted it to look good. But, you know, blue on that side and maybe green on this side. You know, have have a green, uh, you know, straps on the tent and the rain fly and maybe a green pole section there. That would make it so much easier than having everything gray and red. I know I'm harping on that, but, you know, believe me, when it's late at night, when you're tired, when it's dark, when it's raining, you really don't want to have to think about that. And sometimes you do have to get your tent up quickly and this just hinders you. So that's, that's honestly the biggest negative about this tent. Everything else is just, you know, very slight. I don't even think I said that many other negatives. I think, uh, you know, I, I can't remember what I was talking about when I was going around it, but, uh, you know, if they'd fix that, this tent would be awesome. Um, you know, maybe I don't like the, 
the uh, ground sheet that that comes with it but you can get an aftermarket one like this and same with the stakes you know that's not not that huge of a deal um while we're here on the outside one thing i did forget to mention was the um little uh cover or the um the carrying case stuff sack thing so here's the big agna stuff sack this is a really generic stuff sack it's okay i have seen tents that have a waterproof stuff sack which would be better this is a bike packing thing so you're supposed to be able to strap this to your handlebars and just use it as is on your bike but because it's not waterproof you can only really do that when it's sunny out and a waterproof stuff sack with a roll top closure might be better on the other hand if you're putting away your tent wet and you put it into wet uh, into a waterproof stuff sack it's never ever ever going to dry but it's not going to dry in this either so it's not a huge deal but i think something waterproof would just add a little bit more it would make it feel like a higher end tent to me this feels kind of generic um, but not a really big deal also you get quite a lot of extra stuff with your tent there is a uh this is a tent pole splint and you get all these straps i don't even know what these are for but you get all these extra guy wires and stuff so that's pretty cool one thing they don't include is a patch kit which some tents do have it's a waterproof patch kit for your rain fly uh not 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 the end of the world but it would be nice especially at this price point um so yeah that's kind of my thoughts so far i did like the tent and i'm going to take the fly off now and show you the inside and the design of the tent a bit better and maybe try and explain why i like this tent um because there are a lot of positives here there really are it's just that one negative just drives me nuts so let's take the, the fly off completely now and i'll show you um, how this tent is designed okay so here we are looking at the tent without the rain fly and i mean I, in my opinion it's ugly like i said but i actually really appreciate the the color in terms of heat management so i think big agnes in my opinion was putting in some ways a lot of thought into the functionality of the tent but in other ways they were really pushing the design and i wish they'd put 100 percent of their effort into function but again, this white color is really going to help with heat management, and that's actually great, and I can totally get over the color for that. It's way better than having any kind of dark shade. Uh, it really is. It's just going to help, um, you know, keep you cool, especially in the sun. And this is not a four-season tent. It's a three-season tent, so you're not going to be out in the winter anyway. Uh, let's look, take a look at this design a little bit. So it has one pole system, which I'm not going to take it apart here, but there's like a central hub, and then you have... All your pole sections connected to that except for this cross piece on the top and i think a lot of the lightweight tents use that rather than using a traditional like two poles that cross and what this does is some of these poles are actually kind of pre-bent and what that actually does is it helps give you a vertical sidewall so this tent has very vertical sides which helps the tent feel a lot bigger than it is so you know this this wall here is it's not vertical but it's it's pretty close especially with this top thing kind of pulling out the top um, and so this tent feels really roomy for a two-person tent which is really really nice um, also it's not symmetrical which probably maybe that has something to do with keeping those sides vertical it also probably helps keep the weight and the size down a little bit it's actually narrower at this end which i guess is your feet uh, and wider at this back and i think just the way the poles are designed kind of facilitates that because this hub is obviously not in the center of the tent a lot of traditional tents would just be symmetrical with you know a pole two poles going across to either corner and then a top brace like this but this again kind of helps make it feel bigger because it's more vertical in there makes it asymmetrical just to kind of help with the size and the weight um, and overall i think it's actually a really really good design uh, let's go in the inside now so we have doors on either side there is another little toggle thing here. I'm, I guess that's if you want to keep your door uh, open. Let's see if I can show you how that works. One-handed here. Is this still recording? Yes, we are. So you'd basically roll this up. Let's see, which way would you roll it? You can roll this to here. The toggle would hold it all in, which I can't do one-handed. But you can put the toggle around that. And then there's a little cloth loop. Actually, it's that tent fabric material in here which holds, holds the toggle and keeps your door open. I don't know why you'd want to do that, because you're going to get insects. 
But if you're in an insect-free place, you can keep your door open that way. And that's the same system that's on the Rainfly, and I think that's a really good system. The inside of the tent is actually awesome. So if you're in the tent, you can see that hopefully that these walls are nice and vertical. It feels way bigger uh, than a lot of two-person tents I've been in before, even though that foot uh, end of the tent is a little bit narrower. Uh, let's see, there's not... Oh, there's actually some scope to hang a little lantern here if you want. There is a little pocket here. Um, and there's some side pockets, like, here as well. I don't really use those too much, so that doesn't really bother me whether or not they have that, but, you know, there are some pockets here if you want to kind of hang stuff up. And here's also where you can really start to appreciate that light color, because it just, you know, at night you can really see through the mesh. Uh, during the day it just makes it, I mean, you're not, you're probably not going to be in your tent at noon, but it, it just gives it a little bit of a cooler sensation than some of the darker colors. So I actually really, really like that. Um, and I think, you know, this is very well designed on the inside, so. Okay, so my GoPro just overheated itself. It is pretty hot out there. It's about 90 Fahrenheit. Uh, and GoPros don't like that. So let's finish this off in here, but I pretty much got in everything I wanted to say. All the tent stuff's on the floor there now. Um, so overall, I do, I do actually like this tent, believe it or not. I think the design is, is excellent overall. It's a comfortable place to be. A lot of well thought out features. I like the way it pitches. Uh, there's very little to dislike about the tent. The main thing is the color coding, like I keep harping on, um, the stakes, the ground sheet, and also maybe the uh, stuff sack and the accessories. But the tent itself is great. I really like it. It is expensive. It's like I said, around 500 bucks. Pretty lightweight. It's like three pounds something or another ounces. There is an REI two-person tent, which went on sale right after I bought this for about two, less than 250, I think. So less than half the price of this. And it was less than a pound heavier. And I was so tempted to buy that because unless you need something super, super lightweight, that's probably the better buy. But I figured I had this already. I was kind of budgeting for a tent and that extra weight saving will be good for flying with a bike and if I ever do any, any backpacking. So. I'm happy with the tent overall, um, just thought I'd point out my thoughts about it after having actually used it as well. So it's not just me looking at it and saying, I don't like this, I don't like that. It's me actually using it and my experience with it. So hope you enjoy that little review. Thanks for watching, take care and have a great rest of your day.